2-2 in this game. Next up for Spurs, they host Manchester United. Brentford will meet rivals Fulham. Craig, you've been pretty excited about what you're going to see from Spurs under oh, Andrew Potter steady, 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 <laughs> steady. You're changing your pull, mind after that game. No, no, pull the reins back in and rewind that. <laughs> what? It's going to be better okay. in terms of what we're going to watch. The style. Because the style of play, Conte and Mourinho was dire. Some games, even against poorer sides, 30% possession. And I'm not suggesting possession's everything. But all of a sudden, I mean, he's pushing... The fullbacks are pushing on, he's leaving two on two at the back. One of the reasons that Dyer's out and... Uh, he has to sign Van de Ven from Wolfsburg, the Dutch boy. You need quick centre-halves if you're going to play this way. I'm not saying they're the best, but you need quick centre-halves when you're going to push everybody on and leave yourself man for man. But that's what, he, what, he, what he's done all over. You go and ask the Celtic fans. Uh, he's done it in Australia. He did it in Asia. I know Scottish football's not the strongest, but they were the top scoring team out of, out of the top 10 leagues in Europe. And we're going to see a more exciting Tottenham side. Now, do they need a bit more creativity to help out Madison? Yeah, maybe when Benton calls back, uh, La Celso, because Oliver Skip is a little pedestrian. I thought Basuma did well and I thought Madison just fitted in nicely. It's going to be interesting to see when we turn and go the other way because... It's too attacking. Aye. It's too open. It's too, it's too open. There's going to be goals galore involved when Tottenham are playing. And I think what's going to happen is we're going to see what a, what a refreshing change from what Mourinho and Conte did. And I'm sure the Spurs fans will probably begin with... Oh, at least, you know, we're seeing attacking football and we're seeing goals. But eventually, if you keep coming out the wrong side of three twos and whatever it, whatever it's going to be, then that's going to be the test for Postacoglu. Because you can see that happen. You know, yes, going forward, they look great. But in the Premier League, if you leave your cell exposed, people, teams will get after you and kill you. If indeed you're going to play this way, then the role of a guy like Bisuma becomes critically important. And I thought today... Look, full disclosure, Bisuma is a guy that, yeah, I thought he was a good player, but I saw today a guy that calm on the ball, able to find splitting passes, good on the tackle, winning possession back. I thought of all the players that may have impressed from Spurs today, I wasn't so much focused on the attacking half. I thought he was really, really good, and he was impressive today. But he's going to have to work a whole Every lot time, because yeah. in transition, they are exposed. Uh, it's not like Brentford were committing all sorts of numbers forward. But with two or three guys, they were creating problems. And that's how committed to the attack Spurs were. It does leave you exposed, and a guy like Bisuma becomes really important in trying to cut out that transition. Right. Let me get you one of the transfer rumours relating to Spurs, now that Harry Kane's gone. And it is Romelu Lukaku's name that has come Lukaku? <laughs> Apparently, is there has agent, been is his agent brought it up? contact initiated for the striker, far from the advanced stages, but we've been told it's something to keep an eye on. What would you make of a move like that? I don't see it with this coach. This coach is about energy and everybody buying in and, and working hard and playing football. And he's at the wrong end of his career for me. Don't get me wrong, breaking news that Richarlison's not the answer. <laughs> he's just, I mean, Richarlison is what he is. He's a Brazilian international. Fair play to him. But he's a guy that would come off the bench as a battering ram for, to join Kane or replace Kane or whatever when games are going against him. So I don't see that as the answer. But I, I certainly don't see Lukaku as the answer. In fact, I'd be surprised if that was something that uh, Poster Coglu was interested in. Would it surprise you, Stevie? Yeah, yeah. Lukaku does well when teams are counter-attacking. That's he's he's been at his best in counter-attacking sides. And as we've just been talking about, if there's one thing Spurs are not going to be, it's counter-attacking. So how does he fit in? He doesn't. You know, he's not going to hold it up like Harry Kane did and, and he's not going to bring everybody in like Harry... I mean, he's just not. And, he's, and, and I, I'm with you. Richardson's not the answer, but Lukaku's not the answer, absolutely. But they do need, they do need to bring someone in. Well, they need somebody. Well, they've got a so bit of cash, but it's, 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 it's getting a bit late. Moving on. Here, Neymar's available. No, no. <laughs> Mbappe. No, no, no. I'm not doing that. All right, I'm sure there'll be a lot more talk about this on the latest Gab and Jewel show. Make sure to check out their podcast twice a week. It's the Gab and Don podcast. Oh, Gab and Don, Gab and somebody. It's always Gab. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.